What treaty have the Lakota made with the white man that we have broken? Not one. What treaty have the white man ever made with us that they ever kept? Not one. When I was a boy, the Lakota owned the world. The sun rose and set on their land. They sent 10,000 men to battle. Where are the warriors today? Who slew them? Where are our lands? Who owns them? What law have I broken? Is it wrong for me to love my own? Is it wicked for me because my skin is red? This is the original burial site of Sitting Bull, the Native American leader who was killed on Standing Rock Sioux Reservation almost two centuries ago. And it's so fitting because right now, there's a similar battle going on between the Native American tribes here and the U.S. government who are trying to build the Dakota Access Pipeline. Despite the easement victory in early December 2016, many young people remain on the front line. This is their story. The pipeline itself is a $3.8 billion project that would transport crude oil across 1,200 miles from the Bakken oil fields of North Dakota to Illinois, and it's almost completely built. Not only would the pipeline affect the drinking water of 18 million people if it were to leak, but it would cross under Lake Oahe through treaty land given to the Sioux by the U.S. government in 1851. This land was then taken away from them through eminent domain in the 1950s so that a series of dams could be built along the Missouri River by the Army Corps of Engineers. And now, again, for the final part of the pipeline to potentially be built under the same Lake Oahe is a repetition of the historical trauma exerted on indigenous peoples by the U.S. government. The legality of its ability to give land through eminent domain to a private company like Dakota Access or Energy Transfer Partners is under dispute and is the basis of the Standing Rock movement in North Dakota, the longest running protest in modern history. But there's also another prophecy that's galvanized this massive movement, that of the seventh generation. They're the people who are now in their 30s, 20s, and teens. And it was foretold that this seventh generation has a sacred duty to protect the earth and everything on it. All right, let's go. Off we go. We're gonna go over by the river and talk to Vanessa. What did you have to give up back at home to come here? I withdrew from school. I was doing my prerequisites for my bachelor's degree for pre-law. And you know, it was really hard for me. Um, it was hard for me to explain to my family why I was leaving school because they were so proud of me. But at the same time, they understand why I'm here and the struggle that our people are going through. What was it like being on the front line? I had heard about it, that they were firing upon our women first. Um, but it wasn't until I got here and saw it that it's an actual thing, that they fire specifically on our women before anyone else, and they fire at our heads. There are also some police officers that, the, like the one who fired upon me with the mace, um, who smile when they do it, and pull their mask down to, just to smile at us when I ask them if it makes it feel good to, be, to hurt women. There seems to be a lot of young people out here. Yeah, there are definitely a lot of young people. It's because of the rise of the seventh generation. You know, our prophecies say that it was going to be the seventh generation who had to take the stand, who had to step up oh. and take this world back. We're representing the seven generations behind us that were fighting for us. As indigenous people, we're constantly fighting to hold on to the little bit of treaty rights that we have been given. And it's hard for the federal government to even honor those things. Right. It's, it's, it's disheartening. <clears throat> We just left the main camp and we're about to walk up the hill. A couple of veterans are marching up to the front line right now at the bridge. Do you horseback ride normally at home? No, I actually, the first time I rode a horse was here. Yeah? Yeah, and it was oh. actually that one. And he's now my boyfriend. <laughs> this affects everybody. This is almost all battles rolled up into one. This is a battle for Mother Earth. This is a battle of race. A lot of those people back there, I watch their face and they enjoy what they're doing. Water was spraying at us. My girlfriend, I kept her right next to me the whole time. And I just, if the water was coming from right. behind me, I would turn to her like right. this. So I could shield her from the water. After that, we were completely frozen, literally frozen. They try to say we hit our own people with our own propane grenades. We don't even make propane grenades. And you'll get booted out of camp. They even check down to alcohol. They'll check for everything. There's no alcohol out in that camp. There's no 
weapons, no drugs, nothing. Well, I'm glad at least some good came and you met your girlfriend and she met you here. Oh, I think that's awesome. That? Yeah. yeah, yeah, we met here. Dap for love. Yeah, dap for love. <laughs> Young people like Eli and Christina went out to the front line to show solidarity and also to oppose a very real threat. The final easement that Dakota Access would need from the Army Corps to drill under the river and complete the final part of the pipeline. Without this, the company doesn't have the right to finish the project as planned. I'm about five miles outside of the action at Standing Rock and following Chairman Dave Archambault to his house. He's facilitating the meetings between the government and the Standing Rock Sioux tribe. I'm the tribal, tribal chairman, so uh, the, the Standing Rock Sioux tribe has uh, opposed this uh, Dakota Access Pipeline from day one. Mm -hmm. uh, this goes back two years. Do you feel sometimes that civil disobedience is really the only way for your people to make your cause known? Well, I think there's a combination. You know, there's uh, efforts by our youth who did uh, awareness building by uh, getting a petition, uh, using social media, just letting the voices be known that the treatment of the original occupants of this country are, are and have been treated wrongly. While this action, like you just said, it's about Native American rights, it's also, it was started because of an environmental reason to oppose the Dakota Access Pipeline pumping oil. And is it true that you own a gas station on the reservation? And how do you reconcile that? So. Where I live, right here in Cannonball, there's no gas station down the block. Right. And uh, it's a hardship just to travel 20 miles down the road. Having a, a gas station which uses fossil fuels is uh, something that meets the need for my members. What's the current status of the final easement? There's no timeline. There is no um, uh, date set. As luck would have it, just a few hours after the chairman said this, the Army Corps made a major announcement. The almost miraculous happened. The Army Corps has denied the easement to dig under the river. Instead, the Corps will be undertaking an environmental impact statement to look at possible alternate routes. This is, you know, a small victory, but we know that it's it's not over. This doesn't mean that we've completely won. When they said that they cannot build, you know, within 20 miles of the lake, they still continue to drill, build, and dig right. for the pipeline. So, as much as a victory as we want to have and celebrate, um, we are still very skeptical that mm -hmm. this will still continue. It's a slight victory, but you know, we're battling a system that never honored treaties. Mm -hmm. We're battling an ancient enemy, and that ancient enemy has descendants, and that descendant is this pipeline. And this, is, this goes out to the almost 500 people that got arrested, got yeah. abused, falsely charged. I was one of them. We'll continue to fight. You know, this is a spiritual battle. I guess it's all up to Trump now. There's a good chance that once he becomes president, he can reverse this whole thing. But for now, the Standing Rock Sioux and the entire movement have won the battle. Vanessa's prediction came true the very next day, December 5th, the day that was supposed to be the eviction date for the protest. Energy Transfer Partners made an announcement saying that they were going to continue drilling despite their, uh, they didn't get the signature, so they're going to continue. What? Well, it's at least the construction of the pipeline. Yeah. They're going to continue the construction of the pipeline itself on both sides, that way if their appeal goes through, right. they can, they're they ready to drill. Have. We thought we were, that yeah. they were going to we, do a new route. Mm -hmm. But apparently they're just going to continue. So so that, like everyone's still going to stay. Yeah, yeah everyone's still going to stay. We're going to stay, and, and, and the, it's just government side talk out their mouth trying to appease people and make people happy. All these veterans show up. You can't disagree with all this many veterans. I feel yeah. like the announcement yesterday was to detract people from being here and to, to give people the thought that everything was good and that they could leave. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people did leave yesterday, and we did yeah. have a huge influx, but we also had a, a large Outflux. Yeah, I'm gonna get out there. You guys ready? Yeah, me too. Let's go. Get the front lines. We've been out on the bridge for around 10 15 minutes, and it's a big group of veterans, natives, water protectors, and we're in the middle of a blizzard. And what's different this time is there doesn't seem to be any cops or law enforcement on the other side. It's totally empty past the barricades. What's going on right now? It's the, the victory march. We're not for sure yet. I heard they can keep on drilling. 
glad I'm here now, you know, making a difference in life, living history. Mm -hmm. you know? Mini Wachoni. <laughs> Mini Wachoni means? Water is life. What does that stand for? Black Snake Killer, or Black Snake Killer. Why'd you get it? Because we're gonna kill us Black Snake. It's the prophecy of the Lakota. Crazy Horse said that there's a Black Snake that's gonna come through the land and it's gonna kill the land. My tribe fought for the America in the Revolutionary War. Mm -hmm. You know, and then like when they, when they when they told us to come fight for them, they explained that you know how America was gonna be, and this is not how America's gonna be. So I'm here fighting to take back the country that my people helped build. How do you feel? It's, we're yeah, we're we're here till it's done, till I have Lake Saint is dead. With massive up and downs in just the span of a week, it seems like history may be repeating itself from the time of Sitting Bull and beyond. But this time, it could be different. The seventh generation stands out not only because of the massive gathering of 300 tribes, of the outpouring of support on social media, but also because of the unprecedented racial unity that has brought all of these people together at Standing Rock. It started as an environmental concern, but is at its heart a human rights issue that began before America was America. And it's clear that the seventh generation has stepped up to fulfill their prophecy.